The Operations Division at Texas Tech University is glad to present this safety briefing on how to beat the heat this summer. It's such an issue that over 16,000 reports of heat illnesses and 38 heat-related deaths were recorded in 2013 workplace statistics. Not only are there serious health-related risks, but it can also negatively affect productivity as well. It is important to understand the risks of working in conditions that could lead to elevated temperatures in the body. Prompt and early recognition of the signs and effective early cooling can result in avoiding heat-related illnesses. Heat illness is a serious illness that can affect employees working in high temperature areas. There are three forms of heat illness, heat stress, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. Exposure to hot environments is one of the most dangerous hazards in the workplace, and that's why it's important that we take time to understand what this is and how to be prepared for it. There are certain heat illness risk factors to be aware of, and just to name a few, there's high temperature and humidity, direct sun exposure, no breeze or wind, heavy physical labor, not being acclimated to hot workplaces, low liquid intake, and wearing waterproof clothing. Now we'll take a closer look at some of them. Let's look at the occupational risk factors you may face. First, there's heavy physical activity. This causes the body to heat up and is a major source of heat gain for the body. Therefore, employees performing strenuous work in the heat need more frequent breaks. An obvious risk factor is warm or hot environmental conditions such as air temperature, relative humidity, and radiant heat. Providing shade and taking time to rest can help the body cool. Third, if an employee has no experience working in extreme heat, they have a greater risk of getting in trouble. Many heat-related illnesses occur when an employee has been on the job four or fewer days. It's important to gradually increase the workload or allow more frequent breaks at first to help new workers build up a tolerance. And poor ventilation can be a risk factor. Circulating air has a very powerful cooling effect. Now let's look at some of the human risk factors. Some workers are just more susceptible to heat-related illnesses because of these human risk factors. Poor hydration can be a problem. Drinking enough water to stay healthy is vital for maintaining a normal body temperature. Sweating may cause you to lose a lot of water. While sweating can lower the heat of the body, the water loss must be replaced to prevent dehydration. Make sure you have enough water with you at the beginning of every shift. In fact, have extra on hand. You should drink every 15 minutes. Alcohol or caffeine use can increase dehydration risks and increase a body's susceptibility to heat illness. Poor nutrition and health issues can be a risk factor. Physical fitness is a major factor influencing a person's ability to perform work under heat stress. Certain medications can be a risk factor. Medications that affect the body's water retention or other physiological responses to heat. Therefore, certain over-the-counter medicines, prescription medicines, and other drugs may increase the risk for heat illness and other serious medical conditions. Employees should consult with their doctor before working under hot conditions. Finally, wearing clothing that holds in body heat limits air movement and the cooling effects of sweating. This can lead to an increased heat load on the body. Also wearing inappropriate work clothing, such as dark colored clothes or tight fitting clothing, can increase the risk of heat illness. There are three types of heat illness as stated earlier. In order of severity, they are heat stress, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. Heat stress presents as heat cramps caused by the loss of body salts and fluid or heat rash caused by sweat that doesn't evaporate from the skin. Let's spend some time taking a look at the two more serious types on the next slide. Heat exhaustion is the body's response to an excessive loss of water and salt, usually through excessive sweating. Workers most prone to heat exhaustion are those that are elderly, have high blood pressure, and those working in hot environments. 
The most common signs are shown here on the slide. Dizziness and fainting, excessive sweating, rapid or weak pulse, a nausea or vomiting, cool and pale clammy skin, and muscle cramps. Heat stroke occurs when the body becomes unable to control its temperature. The signs to watch out for are a throbbing headache, uh, no sweating, rapid and strong pulse, nausea or vomiting, red and hot dry skin, or even a loss of consciousness. It can cause death or permanent disability if emergency treatment is not given. If you or a coworker is showing signs of any of these heat illnesses, here are some of the treatments that can help. Call a supervisor immediately and inform them of what's going on. Have someone stay with the worker until help arrives. Move the worker to a cooler and shaded area and remove outer clothing. Also, you can fan and mist the worker with water and apply ice. Provide cool drinking water if able to drink and seek medical attention when necessary. Preventing heat-related illnesses is easy to do. It starts with being aware of risk factors and knowing the signs. Remember some of the signs from earlier? For heat exhaustion, it was headache, dizziness, or fainting, excessive sweating, nausea or vomiting, clammy skin or muscle cramps. Some of the symptoms for heat stroke or as a throbbing headache, no sweating, a rapid pulse, nausea or vomiting, hot dry skin, or even loss of consciousness. Drink water every 15 minutes to avoid dehydration. Take frequent breaks in the shade or in a cool room and never work on your own in case you get into trouble. As much as possible, block out direct sunlight. Wear lightweight, light colored and loose fitting clothing and acclimatize by building up a tolerance to being in the heat. What about PPE? Some jobs require PPE, so be aware that these can increase the risk of heat-related illnesses. That should never be a reason, though, to be lax about using the proper PPE for your job, but be smart about it. Some things that you can do to counteract the effects are staying hydrated. Remember to drink every 15 minutes. Use cooling products. Take a break from your masks or other gear for a little while. Sit down and cool off in a shaded area. Certain employees are at a higher risk than others. It's important for workers to be aware of their limitations. Some categories at a higher risk are those over the age of 65, those that have heart disease or high blood pressure or even take certain medications. Make sure you do consult your physician before working in hot environments. Operations takes worker safety very seriously. Make sure that you are aware of the ways to beat the heat this summer. If you do run into an incident, please make sure to report it to our safety officer, Maria Garza, in ARO. And if you have any questions or concerns, please let your supervisor know. Thank you for listening. You have completed this training. Please click the next arrow at the bottom of this window and then choose the red button that says complete training. Thank you.